Oh, the broadcasting is on. It's all fine. Do you hear me? The mic doesn't work. Yeah, the mic is on. Great. So everyone hears me. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues, guests, and of course, the defendant. So we are starting our meeting to review the defense of the dissertation submitted by Evgeny Tsvetkov, uh, submitted in conformity with the requirements for the doctor of biology in 030301 physiology under the title Mechanisms of the Synaptic Plasticity and their role in the formation of amygdala dependent behavior. I would like to put forward a number of the formal statements. According to the uh, decree of St. Petersburg State University, number 4078 slash 1, as of May 10, 2018, me, Alexander Markov, Doctor of Biological Sciences, Professor of General Physiology Department at St. Petersburg State University, was appointed to chair this dissertation board. The dissertation board has four members. Uh, Professor Crevoy is absent uh, due to a business trip, so we have four members of the dissertation board, and the quorum is there. Therefore, may I introduce members of the dissertation board? I would like to introduce them in the Russian alphabet order. So the first member is Boris Krylov, head of Excited Membranes Department at the Pavlov in Physiology Institute. Alexander Markov, that's me, Professor, Doctor of Biological Sciences, Chair of General Physiology Department. Alexander Nostrichov, member of the Russian Academy of Sciences, an expert in autonomous neural systems. And Rustem Hazipov, Doctor of Biological Sciences. Any questions? Any questions or comments? So may I proceed as follows. Well, some official information. According to the federal law, as of August 23, 1996, or uh, number 127FZ on research in academic science, St. Petersburg State University was granted an exceptional right to award academic degrees, and this is what makes us proud. According to this decree, a relevant decree was published to have this dissertation under the number 6821 slash 1 as of September 1, 2016, uh, here and after referred to as the decree. So, so the quorum is there. We have audiovisual contact with one of the members of the dissertation board who is online. And now the rules of the procedure. According to the rules of the procedure, and this is highly important, I would like to highlight that it is different as opposite to what we are used to. A short report of the chairman, uh, this is uh, my uh, mission, uh, to be followed by a short report by the defendant, 30 minutes, questions to the defendant, please two minutes per question. Oh, well, and there is no specific time limit for the defendant's responses, but please be keep it short and simple, and then we declare the reviews. Whereas all members of the dissertation board take turns in declaring their reviews, in putting forward their recommendations, the defendant provides a response to all of the questions and this should take 
15 minutes roughly to be followed by an open Q&A session and the, the technical deliberation to be followed by voting, but this is what I will remind you about later. All right. Now some technical information. The dissertation submitted by Evgeny Tsvitkov uh, in conformity with the requirements for the Doctor of Biology in Physiology under the title Mechanisms of the Synaptic Plasticity and their role in the formation of amygdala-dependent behavior was accepted to defense under relevant decree as of 17 December 2017. Uh, number uh, 11877 slash 1. The defendant submitted the following documents. Application addressed to Rector Kropachev, dated October 20, 2017. A list of publications, 17 overall. All of them are included, are registered with the Web of Science of Scopus, a copy of the Diploma of the Candidate of Biological Sciences, and a dissertation in hard and soft copy drafted according to all of the uh, federal requirements indicated in the uh, documents. I should note that all the documents submitted by the defendant are in conformity with Provision 12, Section 3 of the decree. Therefore, formally, uh, we can uh, give the floor to the defendant. Any questions to the chairman? regarding the documents or the procedure or any other housekeeping issues. I see no one wishing to ask the question. Therefore, we proceed to the next stage. So, Evgeny, you have the floor to report on the key findings of your dissertation. Please make sure you've got 30 minutes and no more. Thank you. Chairman, distinguished chairman, members of the dissertation board, colleagues, and all members of the audience, may I demonstrate my report devoted to mechanisms of the synaptic plasticity and their role in the formation of amygdala dependent behavior. Today, Amygdala-dependent behavior implies emotionally important events. A vivid example is fear. Fear is usually induced by some unconditioned uh, responses as uh, aggression and uh, endocrine changes, as well as depression. Uh, fear is specific behavior. It is def defensive behavior. A key role in fear uh, responses is uh, taken by the dorsal lateral nucleus of amygdala. So this structure is responsible for the if is uh, for the formation of efference to executive centers of the brain. It is believed that the fear formation is uh, responsible for the plasticity of uh, synaptic structures. There are lots of questions that are still overlooked, including issues related to the induction, the development and regulation of LTP and its role in amygdala-dependent responses induced by fear. Therefore, the objective of my dissertation, 
objective of my dissertation is to analyze the regulatory LTP mechanisms of a sensor synapses of the dorsal lateral nucleus of amygdala and the induction of the uh, conditioned fear responses. Therefore, I have set the following goals. The first three goals are about looking at the uh, cortical synapses of the dorsolateral amygdala, it's LTP and regulation of the inhibitory mechanisms, whereas the latter tasks are related to the LTP and its relation to amygdala-dependent fear responses. The last task is the regulation of these processes. So I'm going to refer to these points uh, throughout my report. Therefore, I'm not going to read out this list. So I looked at the following models, rodents, rats, and mice. We used the frontal slices of the brain in electrophysiological tests. To stimulate, we used bipolar electrodes that were located at the internal and external capsule. To register the activity of dorsolateral amygdala neurons, we used physiological mechanisms and the configuration of the entire cell. Uh, so we chose the synaptic responses by electrophysiological criteria. The first task was related to the accession of glutamate gamkergic postsynaptic currencies in projection cells of dorsolateral nucleus of amygdala. Projection cells responses of amygdala have a complicated configuration and it once potentiated they demonstrate glutamate ergic uh, excitatory and inhibitory components. Glutamate ergic component was monosynaptic so as to include monosynaptic AMPA and monosynaptic NMDA components that were inhibited by CNQX and DAPV. Here you can see those volt ampere parameters. AMPA component was non-sensitive to spermine, which means that it is induced by um, GLUR2 receptors that do not allow for calcium ions transmission. NMDA component demonstrated a more complicated nature, which is demonstrated on the slide. One-fourth of it is blocked by Nifen prodil prodyl, which is a specific NR2B subunit receptors, and by three-fourths it is blocked by NVPAAM77. Uh, the complete inhibition is demonstrated in using non-specific DAPV blockers. The gamkergic inhibitory component is a disynaptic nature. The first component is formed by glutamatergic synapses, corticoid and telomoid inputs in interneurons, whereas the second one is formed by interneurons of projection cells. It is blocked by CNQX and picrotoxine that disrupt the synaptic chain at GAMP and glutamatergic synapses. Later, I demonstrated that the relation between 
amplitude of GAMC and AMPA components, it depends on the stimulation and the thalamic stimulation. It is higher than in case of cortical stimulation. I also identified that this occurs due to a higher activity of thalamo into neuron synapses versus to cortical synapses. And the control of inhibitory neurons is higher with telomoid and cortical synapses of projection cells having similar parameters and c being conduced by relevant receptors and, and NMDA receptors. The second goal was to assess the plasticity of the synapses. First and foremost, we analyzed short-term plasticity in case of stimulation. The parameter of this plasticity is calculated by the ratio between the amplitudes. I demonstrated that glutamatergic inputs of amygdala demonstrate a paired uh, facilitation. The same inputs in case of interneurons does, do not demonstrate any facilitation. However, gamkergic synapses of projection cells of amygdala demonstrate depression. So these tests also demonstrated that the thalamic and the cortical stimulation are similar. Next, we analyze LTP parameters. LTP was first identified in hippocampus synapses. The sequence of events resulting in an MDA dependent LTP starts with the release of glutamate, which binds with AMPA receptors in depolarized synaptic membrane, thus ensuring the induction of calcium. Calcium launches LTP of the synapses that were moderately active short before the cell depolarization. By looking at these processes of the slices, we usually use regular stimulation protocols so as to simulate the events in synapses of an intact brain. We use two types of protocols, uh, LTP1 protocol and LTP2 protocols. The stimulus, according to the first protocol, includes the depolarization of postsynaptic neuron by way of presynaptic fibers. At the lower diagram, you can see the results before and after the implementation of this protocol. You can also see the dynamics of this process and the LTP development. The green arrow shows the implementation of LTP1 protocol. The LTP2 protocol is more complicated. Its key idea is that the depolarization of postsynaptic neurons is less and therefore less calcium induced into the cell. These protocols demonstrated that LTP of both inputs requires long-term depolarization and stimulation. Provided one of these conditions is failing, the LTP is absent which is demonstrated by the following slide, where you can see that there is no LTP provided that the protocol is not implemented in full, the protocol one and protocol two. 
it is implemented in full. This means that there is no postsynaptic stimulation, no depolarization of postsynaptic neurons. Next, I demonstrated that OTP of both inputs depends on calcium ions and is blocked by highlighters. The LTP block in case of EGTA and BATA is demonstrated on the following slide. In white, you can see the LTP of the cortical potentiation, the thalamic uh, potentiation. By looking at the calcium-dependent LTP, we can see that LTP is induced by the activation of regulated channels. NR2A channels do not take part in this process as well as GAMP receptors. Overall, this has been experimentally demonstrated by my research, and here are the findings. It's well known that LTP is induced by responses in postsynaptic membrane. So as to localize this process precisely, I analyzed the parameters of paired impulse facilitation and the responses of projection cells of the dorsal lateral nucleus of amygdala. If the amplitude of responses is higher in case of LTP, we can see the lowering of paired impulse facilitation, both in thalamic and the uh, cortical synapses, whereas the frequency of responses increases with the amplitudes of these responses being unchanged. These results mean that there is a, a synaptic mechanism of LTP that explains the release of mediators from presynaptic uh, part of the cortical and thalamic synapses. The next task is about gamkergic innovation in modulating LTP. We compared the parameters of LTP registered in case of uh, GAMP receptors with picrotoxin and in case of their uh, full-fledged activity. In case of LTP protocol 1, GAMP receptors, active GAMP receptors, result in a lower LTP at cortical and thalamic inputs, whereas in case of LTP2, it was partially blocked at cortical uh, input and it was fully blocked at the thalamic input. This means that there is a gamkergic component in this process. Thus, electrophysiological approach that we resorted to allowed us to describe the mediatory transmission of synapses in amygdala, the LTP mechanisms and their regulation by gamkergic interneurons, which results in the fourth uh, goal related to conditioned reflexes of fear and LTP induced by amygdala. We can trace it by comparing electrophysiological and behavioral tests and their results. We did such tests oh, when we used MK801, which is an MDA blocker. I demonstrated that MK801 blocks LTP, oh, including at the level of behavior, and it also blocks the fear responses. However, this approach does not allow us to totally exclude other factors. Uh, 
such as systemic agonists or antagonists. Therefore, we decided to look at how conditioned reflexes uh, impact LTP. Therefore, we use two groups of animals. The experimental group will be tried to develop an aversive reaction to a loud noise, and then we assess the parameters of LTP and the paired impulse facilitation to be compared by the parameters in the control group of animals that uh, did not have this reflex induced. We demonstrated that the conditioned reflexes reduce LTP and they reduce the paired impulse facilitation versus the control group. Lower LTP is explained by the fact that conditioned reflexes are, are accompanied by already potentiated synap synapses that did not participate in developing this response. This demonstrates some similarities in the LTP formation and in a conditioned reflexes formation, including fear behavior. Whereas in the cortical group, we see that this process occurs at presynaptic level, which has already been mentioned above. Thus, I can say that these results demonstrate that LTP is crucial to the, to the transformations in the dorsolateral nucleus of amygdala in developing conditioned reflexes, including fear. The presence of this correlation assumes that LTP and conditioned reflexes are stimulus specific. To verify this statement, I decided to deliver on the next goal, namely to assess the specificity of LTP initiated in sensor synapses in case of dorsolateral nucleus of amygdala stimulation. The initiation of LTP at the thalamic or cortical uh, synapses does not result in LTPs in neighboring inputs. And this means that this response is stimulus specific. Thus, I can, you, I can claim that the results obtained evidence that LTP is crucial to amygdala-dependent fear behavior formation. This function ensures or allows us to suggest that the LTP regulation has its specific parameters. To this end, we did the differential screening so as to demonstrate that amygdala cells as, as opposite to hippocampus cells have statmine protein which have a releasing function. My, therefore, my next goal was devoted to analyzing the function of the statmine at, and its influence on LTP and fear responses. To this end, I compared electrophysiological and behavioral parameters of control group and knockout animals. The statmine activity action analysis, we demonstrated that 
Stettmann G knockout results in deficient LTP versus the controls. The controls uh, demonstrated the same deficit by docetaxel. As for the behavior, absence of statmine and the deficit in LTP results in disrupted amygdala dependent responses. Before the conditioned reflex is developed, the level was equally low in both groups, whereas after this reaction, this parameter grew largely. Where, however, in knockouts, it was lower than in controls. This phenomenon did not impact the pain sensitivity in both groups. What's more, mutation does not impact on hippocampus dependent behavior. However, it impacts uh, other behaviors, which ca we can see by looking at different models where knockout animals easily uh, found themselves beyond the comfort zone. The same research was done in case of gastrin releasing peptide. This peptide is a mediator, an excitatory mediator, which is localized in glutamatergic synapses, including the synapses that are formed at interneurons by amygdala projection cells. The function of this mediator was analyzed by comparing the parameters of the control group of animals that had GRP receptors at interneurons with knockout animals where these receptors were inhibited. We demonstrated that the activation of GRP receptors by way of gastrin releasing peptide results in the interneuron activation. The slices demonstrated higher frequency of gamkergic spontaneous events on amygdala projection cells versus the controls. This effect is developed only in native groups and is absent in knockouts. Next, we demonstrated that the genetic or pharmacological inhibition of GRP receptors results in the inhibition of LTP, which is indicated by in black versus the controls white. In behavioral dimension, this is demonstrated by the facilitation of amygdala dependent responses and fear responses, in particular, knockout animals, black, demonstrate a higher level of freezing in case of conditioned stimulus that in the past used to be associated with electroshock versus the controls white before the presentation of this signal the freezing level was equally low in both groups this response was formed right away after the condition to reflex formation and remained for quite a long time up to 15 weeks this effect was not associated with any transformations in the performance of hippocampus related tasks or in any extra depression or this results in statmine and gastrin releasing peptide do impact on LTP results and 
thus impact behavioral patterns. We assume that state mind uh, acts by way of certain regulation, whereas gastrin releasing peptide uh, acts by way of interneural membranes. These data, these findings, uh, show that an amygdala is kind of a learning filter. Its cells have sensory inputs from different levels of the central neural centers and form efference to uh, other brain centers responsible for fear responses. The throughput of this filter depends on, on the sensory synapses efficiency that is regulated by plasticity both long term and short term. The interneurons are crucial that impact the membranes of projection neurons and the lower the throughput of this filter on the other hand those can demonstrate depression which results in an opposite effect. Thus, these findings and the results of my analysis uh, allow me to put forward the following conclusions that I'm not going to read out. Evgeny, thank you so much for your report. Now let's proceed to the most vibrant part namely questions. Who would like to ask a question? Yes, please. Catherine Vinogradova, Associate Professor of the High Neural System Department and Psychology in Petersburg State University. Catherine, could you please take the mic? So I've got two questions. My first question is, it's not clear which animals are where? Well, in the last model, those were mice, but the, the, whereas the first uh, model were rats. Which lines of rats? I had two lines, Vister, Spredo. And, the, and in case of fear responses, not knockouts, but without knockouts, those are rats, right? Those are rats and K in case of MK801, whereas the rest were mice. Why do you use two lines of rats? But they're different, you know. Could you speak up, please? Could you please speak up? Why did you choose two lines of rats? Just because these experiments were performed in different times. Well, then. As for mice, who were the knockouts and who, what was the wild type? Which line was the wild type? And not, which line were the knockouts? I didn't find this in your dissertation. Yes, indeed. I should include this in the text of my dissertation. Yevgeny, please speak into the mic. So, how many animals were used in behavioral experiments? Groups of six, seven to ten animals. And the sixth question is theoretical. Well, conditioned reflexes, uh, this is a stressor in case of electroshock. You know that stat mine is responsible for different uh, pathologies and there is a research uh, looking into uh, these uh, pathologies resulting from a uh, state mine. Are you sure that this is a conditioned reflex and not a stress-specific response? I mean everything that you registered with potentiation so on and so forth. Well, this is a stressor response. 
But, but, well, you mentioned that this is a conditioned reflex. So are you sure that this is indeed fear and not stress? This is it for my part. More questions. So all speakers should take the mic and come to the floor. So please introduce yourself according to the protocol. Please introduce yourself. Pavel Zikin, Cytology and Histology Department, uh, Associate Professor. You had two schemes with interneurons, but those are different. The last scheme showed one interneuron with thalamic and projection uh, and cortex input uh, convergence, whereas on the third slide you had two of these interneurons separately. Is there any convergence of thalamic and cortex interneurons? Or are those different into neurons? Thank you for the question. Well, reason says that this is convergence because the number of interneurons in dorsal lateral nucleus of amygdala is very uh, few, no more than 2%. What's more, there is data. It is, and it is evidence based that provide to give, uh, that support this statement. A different convergence of telemic and cortical inputs was demonstrated on the basis of interneurons. Thank you. Yes, indeed, I agree with you. And my second question is very short. You spoke about different efficiency of telemic and cortical projections. Oh, why do you claim that thalamic projections are more efficient? Well, well, I did a set of experiments to analyze unitary responses of interneurons and the stimulation of single cortical and thalamic inputs. As a result, we demonstrated that these inputs are no different in terms of frequency of responses, but those are different in amplitude. So the thalamic input had a higher amplitude. That's right. Thank you. I would like to ask everyone to be very careful about the mics so as to ensure there is good hearing and please mind that there is simultaneous interpretation into English and this is indeed a disruption for the interpreter if we are not uh, we do not articulate what we say uh, clearly and if our, our sentences are not structured very well. Well, Elena, according to the protocol, please introduce yourself, although I know you far too well. Elena Voshokova, Professor of Cytology and Histology Department of the uh, Biology of the Faculty of Biology St. Petersburg University, Doctor of Biology. Yevgeny, this uh, LTP response was analyzed uh, highly thoroughly in behavioral experiments and in knockout experiments. The fear response is a strategy, of, it's a behavioral strategy. Do you assume, do you assume that there might be some theoretical mechanism that may disrupt development of this response and thus be a, a promise to block uh, stresses and uh, phobies. Well, theoretically, 
please clo speak closer to the mic. Well, well, theoretically, this mechanism might be induced by long-term depression of sensory uh, synapses of dorsal lateral nucleus of amygdala. Well, I did some tests uh, to induce long-term absence of depression, and I followed lots of protocols. However, we did not find any depression. Nevertheless, we demonstrated successfully that sensory synapses of amygdala demonstrate potentiation. The potentiation, the LTP, which is induced as a result of cell stimulation. So we have, there are protocols that induce depotentiation. So, but these results are not yet published. Those are my just assumptions. Thank you so much. May I ask just another question? Because it, it is a follow up to my first question. Yes, of course, Elena, of course. Yes, please. Well, then my question is as follows. According to the literature, uh, the fear response is at the same time a, a stress component because stress is something which is indefinite. Let's look at Louis Salier, a psychologist, a psychologist who described stress responses. Well, this is something which is absent in Salier's description, whereas morphologists want to see clear cut mechanisms, and this is exactly what you are presenting. Can it be considered as a stress component or not? Well, stress is a component of fear. A signal, and the amygdala is presented with a signal, and the signal is either transmitted or it is it remains in the amygdala. It is encapsulated there, and in case it is uh, transmitted, then relevant structures are activated, and stress is just a part of this response. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elena, Evgeny. Please speak closer to the, into the mic. Right there, like that, please. Other questions? I see no one wishing to ask questions. I think that members of the dissertation board have all their questions in their reviews. Therefore, I'm addressing to members of the audience. Before we wrap up this part of the dissertation, I would like to make sure that there are no questions. Yes, Alexander, please, any question. Any question is welcome. welcome. Alexander Nostwichov, member of the Russian Academy of Sciences, academician. Well, I have switched on the mic. Great. Evgeny, this is my question. The potentiation phenomenon. This is the. This is a very important finding. What's more, you also looked at calcium currents and calcium channels. However, what is the essence of this interaction, of these correlations? How do they impact one another? Well, it's clear that this is a, a transmission, right? This is not something which is generated by itself. It is uh, dependent on the environment. Well, yes, indeed, this is generated not by internal resources, by self-resources. I also demonstrated that this is induced uh, by way of the uh, by way of NMDA uh, channels and calcium channels, and the input of calcium uh, 
results in postsynaptic depolarization and thus launching the potentiation process. Therefore, LTP is calcium dependent and NMDA dependent, which means that calcium neurons are uh, are in, they uh, use the uh, NMDA input. Thank you. More questions? I see no one wishing to ask the question. Evgeny, thank you so much. You can take a seat. According to the procedure, I have to announce the reviews submitted in response to the dissertation. The dissertation has not generated any extra reviews. So therefore, I have to omit this point of the agenda, thus proceeding to the next provision of the procedure. I would like to urge Evgeny and members of the dissertation board to comply with the following procedure. I would like now to ask all the members of the dissertation board to present their reviews according to the Russian alphabet order and to uh, voice their statements, recommendations, and the very last part of their report. And then, after all of the members of the dissertation board have presented their reviews, you can provide their responses. But when you will be providing their responses, please do indicate who are you responding to, so as to have a clear-cut structure. Then now I would like to give the floor to Boris Krylov, Doctor of Biological Sciences, Head of the Physiology of Excitated Membranes, Pavlov Physiology Institute, distinguished member of the dissertation board, distinguished colleagues. I would like to say first and foremost that I was so much fascinated by having, a, having an opportunity to provide my review to this dissertation. Rarely do we see cases when several scholarly traditions are presented in research of that high caliber. What we see is that there is a convergence of two traditions, the Sechen of Pavlov tradition and the ideas enshrined into our current methods by these luminaries, the ideas that have uh, been consumed by, by all scientists across the globe, and the other tradition is the Harvard tradition. Therefore, I should say that the methods used are indeed outstanding. I believe I won't make it in 10 minutes. Well, Professor Krilov, in 10 minutes I will stand up. Well, this is a highly complicated research. Quite often, Evgeny refers to Candler from neuron to brain. And yes, indeed, going back to Candle, in the past, we used to work with identified neurons, but here the scope is indeed huge. I mean, the identified amygdala neurons that are in the limbic brain system and the dorsal nucleus has its neurons that were analyzed by the uh, defendant. This is something outstanding because these Neurons are identified for the first time, and according to physiology, those are, have huge impact on fear responses. 
So, what's next? It's clear that on the one hand, the defendant analyzed the structures that impact LTP, both the synaptic uh, the synaps synapses are the terra incognita. So the defendant analyzed the inhibitory processes that were analyzed in the classical way by the LTP of the membrane potentiation and the excitatory uh, processes. NMDA receptors on the one hand and GAMK receptors on the other hand, which are inhibitory receptors. And if we take it like that, this dissertation is clear. So the patch clamp methods all the way to behavioral experiments with knockout mice demonstrated one important thing, namely that the synaptic transmission and the processes that are there are highly complicated. However, we could identify a number of aspects, and these particular aspects are represented as the key findings to the dissertation. Well, physiologically, uh, well, I don't know whether we would deliver on this in this century. Well, I don't know whether the translator is keeping up with me. Yeah, that's great. So far, we are clueless as to how the neural impulses input is launched at the sensory processes. We can understand it. On the other hand, the norceptive system, which was finally described here, we see that excitatory processes potentiate the norceptic signal. But once we look at the synaptic membrane, the secondary input is lost. Well, let's look at the Pavlov's tradition, which demonstrated that at this level, I mean, at the synaptic signals level, we can see that the filters are rearranged. And we see how fascinatingly those are rearranged in the dorsal lateral nucleus of amygdala. We can see the rearrangement, the secondary coding, I mean, it is not in this century that we will make it clear with the primary coding, but this is an attempt towards to, de to deliver on this uh, objective. Let's look at Harvard tradition. Two peptides expressed by these neurons were analyzed. One of those peptides is responsible for excitatory processes. Those are statmine, which is responsible for plasticity regulation. This plasticity in, uh, influences the microtubes. And the second one is the gamkergic uh, control by way of a gastrin releasing protein and the glutamate inducing the excitatory processes, whereas the statmine is rather inhibitory. So this dissertation demonstrates how brain controls the entire physiology. And this is indeed groundbreaking, uh, which uh, opens up a perspective to understand how the regulations of these uh, filters transforms into oncology like oncoprotein 18 and how brains regulate responsible tissues which express, which have these peptides and express these neurons. If I've got a minute, I've got four minutes actually. I would like to note that the novelty of this research is that the defendant analyzed the mediator synapses formed by the cortex and the thalamus showing that the LTP mechanisms has a presynaptic nature and is induced by uh, the uh, mediator release of the presynaptic component. Here we see how the filters are transformed to the cortical and thalamic impact 
on dorsolateral nucleus of amygdala is differently influenced. The cause of this phenomenon is the efficiency of glutamatergic synapses demonstrated by uh, Talamus. And this results in LTP initiated at the cortex and Talamus demonstrate different gamkergic modulation. This allows us to analyze the regulatory function of calcium channels. The released calcium is not the responsible for LTP potentiation, whereas the calcium which comes from transmembrane calcium channels plays a crucial role, including the NMDA receptor. I also would like to focus on the comparison of the parameters. We failed to do it so far. The defendant compares parameters of long-term potentiated animals versus the control group so as to describe the LTP occlusion phenomenon. And this proves the fact that this is a conditioned process which involves a plastic deformation of synapses. The plastic processes in learning is similar to artificial initiation of LTP. The specificity of LTP of telemic and cortical inputs of amygdala allowed to to prove that this mechanism is regulated by the reverse inhibition of mediators. Therefore, to wrap up, I would like to say that questions, well, questions. Do you have questions? Yes, of course. I do have questions. Yes, of course, I do have them. In section 2.17, the registration of transmembrane current and potential, the defendant describes the method of a local fixation of potential. However, there is no control of a resistance, which is highly important. The currencies are very low. So this tolerance may not have some impact. However, the this might provide for even more precise findings. In section 3.2, the analysis of LTP mechanism, the cortical and thalamic inputs of dorsolateral nucleus of amygdala were stimulated. Is it possible to say that the stimulation of one input is not associated with partial stimulation of the alternative input fibers? Shall I read out the conclusion? But just do not list all of the decrees and all the provisions of the decrees. But I think that you should read out the decree because this is a formal requirement. Well, based on everything about said, I believe that the dissertation by Evgeny Tsvitkov is in conformity with all the requirements uh, indicated in the relevant decree, whereas Evgeny Tsvitkov deserves to be awarded this part academic degree of Doctor of Biology in 030301 Physiology. Thank you so much. Let's proceed to the next uh, report. I would like to remind you that Igor Krivoy is on a business trip. Therefore, I have to inform everyone all about the contents of this review. Uh, if I may, I would like to read it out from the rostrum because it's more comfortable. I would like to address members of the dissertation board and to find out whether I can, whether I may, in reading out Professor Krilov's, Professor Krivoy's uh, review. May I focus on the questions only, omitting thus uh, his just technical analysis of the dissertation and the description of the dissertation? Yes, of course. Sure, you can, because you won't make it in 10 minutes otherwise. Thank you. Well, this is the 
uh, review. The research is highly relevant. The synaptic plasticity is one of the most acute challenges in neurophysiology. This is one of the key problems which has been so far overlooked. I mean the molecular mechanisms that underlie fear as a response. The key component of behavioral and physiological responses of fear is the limbic, is a, the structure of the limbic system, mainly the amygdala. So this research focuses on the plasticity of dorsal lateral nucleus of amygdala, which are responsible for amygdala-dependent fear responses. Despite the huge amount of research papers in this area, lots of questions are understudied. Those are the functional role of LTP, as well as the protein regulation mechanisms involved. Therefore, the dissertation by Evgeny Tvetkov, which analyzes, comprehensively analyzes molecular mechanisms of long-term potentiation of sensory synapses of dorsal lateral nucleus of amygdala, is highly relevant for ne neurophysiology. Novelty. The dissertation was uh, made on mice and rats. Uh, an electrophysiological analysis was used in lots of approaches, including uh, conditioned reflexes and genetic approaches. That makes the research highly valuable. Then the key results are listed. So may I not read those out again? The member of the dissertation board notes that these results are highly important both theoretically and practically, indicating specific pathophysiological fear processes that can be uh, amended. The second point is the structure and the scope of the dissertation and a very meticulous analysis of the dissertation. May I omit this point? The justification of the findings. I would like to dwell on this point. The dissertation includes top-notch methods. These methods are in compliance with the objectives. The results are very well documented and evidence-based. The scope of evidence is broad, which means that the findings are highly valuable. All the data obtained is very meticulously processed and comprehensively analyzed. So this, uh, th these findings were tested uh, and were verified at uh, in a, a huge amount of conferences. And th this makes these findings evidence-based and absolutely undoubtful. Questions? The first question is well, to assess the short-term plasticity of the uh, calcium microdomain principle uh, is done by way of paired stimulation protocol. It's yet unclear whether this test is useful in case of LTP based on other principles. And the interpretation of a lower level of facilitation as a result of the higher possibility of mediator release, page 97-98. What happens to the reserve of the readily releasable pool of mediators, which are the result of a complicated process of seclusion and quantum mobilization? The second question, what's the author's opinion on the involvement of endocannabinoid system 
into the presynaptic OTP mechanisms, provided that there is data in favor of cannabinoid receptors in amygdala and the impact of the input calcium uh, launching the secretion of endocannabinoids in postsynaptic cell. A third question. In the data update of animals, whether these data can be extrapolated onto humans. Point of criticism. Your method includes only the throughput before injecting the analog signals into the computer. However, you do not indicate the uh, quantum frequency, which is crucial according to Katelnikov and Nyquist theory. Quite often, some wording is failing. The LTP mechanism is expressed at the presynaptic level of the analyzed synapses. Well, I should say that in my review, there is the same point of criticism. I'm not going to repeat it once again. All this permanent effect on the amplitude. Well, the, this wording seems uh, not clear to incorrect or inappropriate to the member of the dissertation board. These recommendations and points of criticism do not invalidate the dissertation. This dissertation is an original and an accomplished research devoted to a fundamental uh, aspect of neurophysiology. It has huge theoretical and practical importance. Therefore, the dissertation by Evgeny Tvetkov, Mechanisms of the Synaptic Plasticity and their role in the formation of amygdala-dependent behavior is in conformity with all the requirements stipulated in uh, the relevant decree whereas the defendant Evgeny Tvetkov deserves to be awarded the inspired academic degree of Doctor of Biological Sciences in 030301 Physiology. Professor Crivoy thus signed. Well, according to the Russian alphabet, Alexander Markov is next. So, therefore, I'm going to extrapolate on my review. Well, well, the previous speaker uh, decided to be emotional in his speech. Me as a chairman, well, I have to comply with the all housekeeping requirements and the requirements of the procedure. I'm going to be more theoretical and I will read my report out. The dissertation by Evgeny Tvitkov is devoted to one of the most relevant issues in physiology. Those are cellular mechanisms responsible for associative uh, learning, in particular the reflex conditioned fear response. This uh, dim dimension uh, has a huge prominence because there is the description of this uh, response. Uh, and there is a huge gap between this description and our understanding of specific brain structures and cellular processes and how this response is generated. And this uh, dissertation is there to bridge this gap. Behavioral methods are um, Behavioral methods are combined with uh, the uh, neuron synaptic plasticity uh, methods, which allows to study the basic emotional fear response generated when exposed to stressors as a defensive behavior. The analysis of uh, existing research papers is highly meticulous, which makes the objective and the goals of the research ultimately clear. Novelty.
So I'm going to focus on only most important issues. So I will read out the novelty paragraph and then we'll proceed on to uh, criticism. The novelty is about two fa groups of facts. The first of them is the LTP occlusion after the reflex conditioned fear responses generated. To me, this is highly relevant. This phenomenon allows us to recap on the fact that this process is associated with plastic transformation of synapses and the synaptic processes launched by learning are similar to those launched by artificial uh, LTP initiation. The second point is that the inhibitory processes launched in the dorsal lateral nucleus of amygdala is so launched uh, by way of cortico amygdaloid glutamatergic uh, synapses are not equal to uh, those launched by way of the telema amygdaloid inputs activation. But lastly, point of criticism, the expression at the presynaptic level. This is something that has already been mentioned. And this is my question, Evgeny, that I would like to address to you. Well, you say that for the first time, you were able to show that the calcium released from the intracellular depot does not impact the LTP parameters, whereas the calcium which it comes by way of transmembrane calcium channels is crucial to these processes. Now, therefore, my question, by what way calcium ions in the cytoplasm that are in the cytoplasm by this or other way and that are not specific to any agonists, how do those launch the activation of different signal? Uh, channel signal pathways. Is it calcium which is responsible for that or something else? To wrap up, I would like to say that the dissertation submitted by Evgeny Tvetkov mechanisms of the synaptic plasticity and their role in the formation of amygdala dependent behavior is in conformity with all the requirements according to the decree where is the defendant Evgeny Tvetkov deserves to be awarded the inspired academic decree of Doctor of Biological Sciences 00003031 Physiology. Thus signed Professor Markov. And without interrupting the uh, meeting, I would like to address to academician Nostrachov and to ask him to present his review. Alexander, the floor is yours. The floor is yours. Distinguished chairman, distinguished colleagues, it is my ultimate pleasure to say that this research is highly exciting and I'm not exaggerating in saying that in saying that I came up with a, a highly a bulky review that covers all points and all my encapsulates all my thoughts and everything is there so there are six pages overall. Well, there is a 40 years tradition uh, for me of participating in dissertation boards. And I'm, every time I'm so much excited about every meeting. This is an excellent research that brings together the entire scope of all cutting-edge methods to analyze this fine, this vibrant psychological uh, mechanism, which is highly crucial. 
we've got pitch clump, we've got uh, generated potentials and NMDA. Everything, all the methods are there. Not only methods and tools, but also levels. If my disciple would give me, who's the chairman, basically would give me an extra minute, but he won't. In 1897, the Nobel Prize, the first Nobel Prize winner in physiology or medicine, the first one in human civilization, and the first one in Russia. That's good, actually. In his speech, said that physiology has already gone through many stages of cognition, both behavioral, both uh, cellular and uh, bodily. But the future of physiology is is the physiology of a living molecule. This is the sixth volume of Ivan Pavlov works. This is what he says. And now we are very close to this particular level. Yevgeny's dissertation is devoted to the behaviors of a living molecule. Well, of course, there are lots of questions. And there is a desire to know more. A lot has been already said by my colleagues before me. A lot has been said by Boris, who has recently published a fascinating book of the same level, actually. Alexander and many others. Well, I would like to be short and simple, so therefore I'm not going to focus on all the meticulous details that are there on paper. They have already been declared by the first, the second and the third speakers. What I'm excited about is why Evgeny you decided to focus on gamkergic transmission and not on mediators or something else. And you didn't mention those actually. Well, I'm fully sensitized to the fact that you are the first one here. You make are making a discovery. So you you arrived. You saw it, and you uh, you have set up a pole signifying that the clock dike is there, and then you went on, and this is what you did actually. You are the first conqueror of this uh, of this edge, this mountain edge. I think that this dimension has a huge promise, and the this outlook would include that I would first look into serotonin. Why? Because fear, depression and lots of other things, petrification, this is a highly important issue, and today we are presented with, at the defense of a doctoral dissertation in biology. Once in 1863, the general physiology department was set up at St. Petersburg State University. It primarily looked into neurophysiology predominantly into neurophysiology. And this research is the finest neurophysiology of its own kind. 
So, going back to what I started with, serotonin. Why is it so well known? It is responsible for catalepsy, for petrification, and so many other processes that are there are modulated by the very same mechanisms. There's a cortical, telemic, and amygdaloid, and many other mechanisms. Well, of course, the co-mediators, the postsynaptic transmission, the release, the, the inhibition, the binding, those are the same, but I remember the years when I was employed by the Experimental Medicine Institute and the very fact that serotonin was discovered, it was, it was described as an anti-fear uh, substance responsible for chorea, neurosis, neurologic uh, events. I believe that one of the perspectives of this dissertation is the expansion into this particular area because this is highly crucial for both medicine, for both fundamental and research-based uh, science, but it has a practical implementation because fear, this is something that is larger actually than the threat and that actually impedes us from moving forward, from disregarding the threat. So it has a military importance, by the way. I believe that physiology, well, at least in St. Petersburg, has achieved this cutting edge level. In my file, I've got uh, a short resume of a different doctoral dissertation that was defended, well, recently. And this dissertation speaks about the same thing. This is social behavior of animals, the same knockout mice, and the same approaches, and the same electrophysiological constants. But which means that we, now we are, there is a breakthrough thanks to your research, thanks to the research of the evolutionary physiology and biochemistry. We have now achieved a very solid, a very sustainable level. I would like to make sure how much time more do you need for your report? How much more time will you need for your report? I think that's enough. Well, I can uh, go on for hours and hours about this dissertation because it is so much to my liking. Well, good, good. Uh, we got it. But please speak into the mic. I have a suggestion. I have read this dissertation meticulously. And I think that it would be reasonable to, to have it published as a book in soft and hard copy whatever you wish, in an expanded version. But the bibliography is failing, it's too short, actually. Well, you could expand on that. You could have demonstrated more, and you should do that. And just demonstrate that you are the host, that you have set up this pole at the Klondike Edge. Well, thank you very much for the suggestion.
just take out all the waste. So I read what I was so much excited about, and this research made me excited. But the day before yesterday, no, you were at this meeting the day before yesterday, and we spoke about uh, different sciences under the umbrella of St. Petersburg University. So today, I can announce that we are having a very solid, a sustainable dissertation, which is a promise. And this lays the ground for um, all other dimensions in sociology, in physiology, in psychology. And this is a, in, indeed a rare and a precious event. So I'm in favor of this dissertation. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, put forward my excuses to Rustem. Uh, why am I uh, putting forward my excuses? Because I introduced everyone at the beginning of our meeting, but I failed to introduce Rustem in full because I don't know him in person. Rustem Hazipov is head of the Neurobiology Laboratory of the Institute of Neurobiology of Brain of, of the Mediterranean Academy of Natural Sciences, France. Okay. Professor Hazipov, the floor is yours, colleagues. Do you hear me well? Yes, we do. Well, I join my colleagues in their support of this dissertation. It is a great dissertation. It is a high caliber research which has made a number of highly important discoveries in how in the function of amygdala in LTP and its role. If I may, I'm not going to read out my report. I would like to focus on the things that were most amazing to me. And all my recommendations my po are not actually points of criticism, but just merely recommendations. I would like to refer to illustration 13 on cortical and telomoid relay cells. What we see very clearly is that in cases of cortical stimulation, we see a different result as opposite to telomoid cortication. So the frequency is higher. But apart from the amplitude, the author failed to note that the length of depolarization in the response is longer by several seconds, which creates uh, a perspective for further uh, com combined multiple potentiation. So the inhibition and the excitatory uh, effect on the amygdala is kind of a window and this difference of 20 milliseconds means that there is the cortical and cortical and post cortical uh, excitation and this may be responsible for the OTP generation I would like 
to recommend the defendant to analyze the reasons behind that as, and to analyze the gamkergic impact, whether it has a role in these processes, whether neurons are responsible. This is the f first part of my question. And the second part of my question is devoted on what is the effect behind this difference, whether it can be responsible for the LTP and the protocol that you used. Uh, allows me to suggest to look at a multiple stimulation and what would it result in? How would it affect the neurons? at the second and at the 20th millisecond of the excitatory response. And there may be more than one uh, answers to this question. Well, this research is a very meticulous analysis of LTP and the implications behind it. So these protocols are very broadly used in what way can these protocols Uh, and the difference between this protocol and influence the ultimate results. So, I mean, the activation of thalamic uh, synapses. How are those related to time and the activity of postsynaptic neurons? I think that it would be reasonable to assess the organization of the efferent of the uh, of the efferents in the function of dorsolateral nucleus of amygdala. Oh, this is a broad scope of questions. But those are not points of criticism, but rather a perspective for further research. And I believe that the defendant, Evgeny Tsvetkov, deserves to be awarded the aspired academic decree. Thank you so much. Well, Evgeny, now a very important part of our meeting has arrived. Well, it's it's the time for you to take turn and to provide your responses to all the questions addressed to you. Please mention who are which question are you providing the response to and who are you speaking to? Actually, who was the author of the question? And please ensure you're close to the mic. Well, my reply to Professor Markov, I fully accept the, I'm sorry, please do not, don't care about statistics. Keep it to the point. Well, for the first time, well, Professor Markov, you say that for the first time, the release of intracellular calcium depot does not impact the LTP parameters, whereas the transmembrane calcium uh, canal calcium which is in this cell uh, has a crucial role in this respect. How uh, how come that the calcium which is in cytoplasm can be specific uh, to its origin, can be origin specific? Well, the thing is not about calcium. The thing is that uh, the protocols that we use do not uh, generate the calcium release in case of stimulation. Therefore, 
when we use the calcium release blockers, we do not see any effect. We also demonstrated that the LTP is launched if the calcium ions concentration is high, but this is something that I have already replied to. My reply to uh, Professor Krilov. In provision 2.1.7, I describe the local fix fixation of potentials. Well, in short, this is the question about consecutive resistance. Well, yes, indeed, I did not uh, indicate the value of consecutive resistance, but this does not mean that we did not measure it. We traced consecutive resistance not only when in the whole cell model, but also throughout the test, so as to see whether the registration conditions are stable. Overall, the consecutive resistance was from uh, 10 to 25 uh, mega ohm in these cells. My response to second question. In section 3.2, mechanism, LTP mechanisms are analyzed as well as the cortical and thalamic inputs of dorsolateral or nucleus of amygdala. Is it possible to say that the stimulation of one of the in inputs is not associated with partial stimulation of the alternative input, neighboring input. Well, well, you can take my word for it that the stimulation is not interdependent. There is no correlation. And we did the following experiments. First, we stimulated the cortical input, and we registered the response. And then we stimulated the thalamic input and registered the thalamic response. Later, we stimulated both inputs simultaneously and registered the overall response. So the overall response, then we compared the overall response, the accumulated response with the with individual responses. Due to the fact that these responses have the similar amplitude, this means that there is no overlap. Once there if there were an overlap, the thalamic uh, response would have been lower in case of a dependency. Well, my reply to Mr. Krivoy, Professor Krivoy, questions. Well, the first question is about paired impulse facilitation. Professor Krivoy, is asking about the protocol uh, in LTP and the implementation of this protocol. Regrettably, Professor Crivo is not here with us. So I wrote an email to him and I emailed my response. And this is my reply. Well, the thing is that in case of LTP, there is the mediator from the presynaptic part of the synapse might be released uh, if the possibility of this release is low the first signal 
in case of low possibility of release, does not generate any exhaustion in the synapse, whereas to the second response, the signal is higher because it is potentiated by calcium ions. If the LTP is there, the possibility of the mediator release is higher and the response to the first stimulus in paired impulse facilitation results in exhausted synapse, whereas the, f the response which follows up is either not potentiated or it demonstrates a short-term depression with paired impulse depression developed. Well, to prove the fact that LTP increases the possibility of mediator release, we analyzed unitary responses. In particular, we demonstrated that before the LTP is there, The frequency is higher before than after the LTP, and therefore the frequency of responses is lower than after the LTP is there, which means that LTP is associated with higher possibility of mediator release. And here you can see the overall diagram indicate with amplitude indicated. The amplitude is average and it remains unchanged whereas it is frequency that is changed or the frequency of uh, the uh, induction of the unitary synapse. Question number two is about endocannabinoid sy system in the presynaptic LTP mechanisms. This question seems to be uh, about uh, CB1 receptors in the central neural system. Our experiments demonstrate, attempted to analyze the function of CB1 receptors. To this end, we used agonists and antagonists of endocannabinoids, which means that in particular we used AN251 as an antagonist. However, uh, we did not register any impact on LTP. This does not mean that endocannabinoids were not there and they are not responsible for this mechanism. But, well, anyway, we failed to identify this mechanism. Endocannabinoids uh, CB1 receptor is related to the inhibitory effect due to depolarization. This effect was not registered at our cells. We failed to register it, although the test, we did all the necessary tests. Question number three. This is a matter of discussion whether the results uh, obtained on animal models can be extrapolated onto humans. Well, they can, I think, because humans are also also undergo fear equally as animals. The evolution. Uh, is related to the sensory amygdala transformation and the central amygdala increases in the course of evolution due to cortical brain structures development, whereas the efferent outputs are unchanged because they are highly conservative. They are averse to any evolutionary transformation. And therefore, the aggression, depression, and all other reactions are present both in humans and in animals. But in humans, they can be regulated at a higher level 
and are better, actually. They are better regulated, and the regulatory mechanisms are more sustainable. Moving on, the next question. The method uh, describes the throughput in the computer without indicating the uh, the frequency and which and this parameter I mean the frequency the quantum frequency is important for us to know according to the Kotelnik of Nyquist theorem well yes indeed it has to be split in long uh, distant in long points and therefore the question what is the frequency of splitting the signal we use the frequency of 5 kilohertz from 5 to 10 kilohertz Well, wording which is failing, well, I accept all of these points of criticism. So what else? What else do we have? I'm sorry, Rustem Narimanovich, not Narimovich as it is uh, on the slide. I'm so sorry. The first question, Professor Hazipov, is about the space, spatial organization of post-synaptic efferent targets. Well, regrettably, I would like to have an opportunity to do such research so as to identify the spatial and uh, the time organization of the synapses and to analyze those on a living brain. However, I did not have such an opportunity and but this is uh, indeed a promise this is the out uh, my outlook for the future because I'm highly exciting of having such experiments done the second part of the question is about the protocols and whether those are in com those comply with what we see in neurons, well, a protocol is a module of processes. However, it is a not precise, uh, not a precise model. Therefore, we use two protocols: one with a very strong depolarization of the postsynaptic neuron with a large calcium input, and the second protocol with a lower depolarization and and a lower calcium input so as to have more valid, more relevant and valuable data. So whether it is in conformity with what we observe, well, it is partially in conformity and and it cannot be in con totally in conformity in this respect because once we stimulate the postsynaptic synapses, this is an analog signal, whereas when we depolarize a cell, this is an unconditioned signal. So in the brain, we see the postsynaptic input which generates this depolarization, and thus we see the direct effect. So this model can be adjusted to the reality, but no, it is not the reality. It never will be the reality. Question number two is about what you noted in the pre cortical stimulation, namely that not only the gamkergic response amplitude is changing, but also the length of glutamatergic response is different. The gamkergic component is dysynaptic. It is it involves glutamatergic synapses and via this synapses the gamkergic neurons are activated to be followed by the uh, operation amygdala uh, cells uh, activation of gamkergic receptors. And this is actually how the glutamate, 
glutamatergic response is regulated. The lower the gamkergic response amplitude, the higher the length of this excitatory potential. Yevgeny, well, time, time is all the essence. Time is almost out. Thank you so much. I think I've covered all the questions. Thank you. I would like to address my question to all the members of the dissertation board, whether they are satisfied with the defendant's responses or whether they would like to uh, go on with the discussion. Satisfied? Alexander? Yes, I am. Thank you. Well, Igor is absent. We cannot ask him. Well, but he... Rustem, I'm satisfied. Thank you. Well, so far, I cannot get used to the fact that some members of the dissertation board are at some distance and not with us physically here. Evgeny, thank you so much for thank you very much for your responses. Please take your seat. According to the uh, procedure, it is the high time for an open Q and A session. Everyone wishing to take the floor can actually take the floor and ensure uh, no, you have no more than five minutes. Please introduce yourself before speaking. Is anyone wishing to contribute? No one is wishing to take the floor. I've got a pause and I see I have ensured that no one wanted to take the floor. Well, I'm sensitized to this fact because we have already been presented with a highly detailed, highly meticulous analysis. Well, then we move on to the next point. So, it says that we have to switch on the broadcasting for five minutes with everyone leaving the room. I'm sorry for saying that because the discussion has to be performed only among the members.
Мне очень понравилось, что во время нашего... Well, I was highly pleased to see that there was a highly passionate discussion in the uh, outdoors of this room, and it was equally passionate as it was here. Well, I would... Well, indeed, there are the individual behaviors, so there are inborn behaviors that are gradually become ever more structured. So this is likewise am I. So now I would like to put this uh, issue on whether to award Evgeny Tsvetkov with a spied academic degree on vote. Please mind that the decision of the dissertation board is considered legitimate if unless uh, more than one half of the uh, members of the dissertation board have voted in favor. Therefore, I will be addressing each member of the dissertation board. And once I have the reply, I will move on to the next one, and then I will sum up the results. I will do the calculus. I would like to f uh, proceed in the alphabet, Russian alphabet order. Professor Krylov, I'm in favor. Alexander Markov, me, I support this uh, dissertation. I vote in favor. Alexander Nozdrachov, I vote in favor. Rustem Narimanovich, I vote in favor. Thank you. Thus, distinguished colleagues and guests, may I declare that out of the four members of the dissertation board present, at the dissertation meeting, all the four members of the dissertation board have voted in favor. No abstentions, none against. The decision on whether to award the spied academic decree of the candidate, well, I stopped because there is the specialty is different and the degree is different. Therefore, I may read it out once again. So I have to amend it on the go. So the decision on whether to award the inspired academic degree of the Doctor of Biological Sciences in the specialty 030301 Physiology is thus considered decided. So we have voted in favor. Evgeny, your concluding remarks. The floor is yours. So we are awarding the defendant with the degree, academic degree of the Doctor of Biological Sciences of St. Petersburg State University. So you failed to mention St. Petersburg State University. Well, let's follow the procedure. So I'm acting according to the procedure. I'm now giving the floor to Alexander, uh, the, the, Evgeny the floor for his concluding remarks, and then I will just dwell on all the finer details. Alexander, I'm following the procedure in asking that there is an official that there is an official document granting the St. Petersburg State University and the Moscow State University on granting the academic degree of under the title of this university in the name of the university. Why haven't you mentioned the fact that this is academic this academic degree is awarded under the name of or in the name of St. Petersburg State University. Well, Alexander, we will discuss this topic after we are presented with the concluding remark. We will dec declare uh, that Evgeny is entitled this part academic degree later. Distinguished members of the dissertation board, distinguished colleagues, distinguished members of the audience, I'm highly grateful to those who participated, who facilitated actually uh, the process of preparing this dissertation for defense. I would like to extend my gratitude to chairman of the dissertation board and the secretary of the dissertation board. 
for the opportunity to have my defense in this dissertation board. I'm highly grateful to all the members of the dissertation board for their high caliber, their meticulous and highly valuable reviews for being so impartial that these reviews allowed me to uh, understand and to get sensitized into its meaning and its drawbacks. I'm highly grateful to Mr. Vesolkin, to Vadim Bolshikov, to Yelena Krasnoshokova, those who are not there, regrettably, for the opportunity to work in the Sechenov Institute and in St. Petersburg State University and in Marklin Hospital. I would like to extend my gratitude to members of the functional neuromorphology, histology and cytology, Bechenko, Lubov and others for their questions and for the discussion. I'm highly grateful to Elena for your contribution that has been there for many, many years, for your friendly support and for your assistance in my work on the dissertation. Alexander, I would like to also to address to you. I know how busy you are, nevertheless, you had time for my dissertation and you welcomed me to have an academic discussion about my dissertation. I was highly honored by uh, this invitation and this discussion was enormously valuable to me. And to wrap up, I would like to extend my gratitude to those present here for their interesting questions, for the discussion and for their uh, interest about my research. Thank you so much to all of you. Evgeny, you may take your seat. Thank you. Distinguished members of the dissertation board, distinguished members of the audience, we are now present at a landmark event. This is the first meeting of the dissertation board of biology and it is the first case, the first event when we are awarding the academic degree in biology of St. Petersburg State University, the doctorate degree. So, and I believe that we should highlight that we are awarding the defendant with the academic degree of the doctor of bio biological, physiological, historical sciences of St. Petersburg State University. This is highly important for us and for the university overall. To wrap up, I would like to ask you whether you have any comments any points of criticism on the procedure? I see none. Thank you so much for your contribution. And Evgeny, on behalf of the dissertation board, we congratulate you with, uh, with the title of the doctor in biology. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.